Hi, and welcome to the North American Ag Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak, and today's interview is with Jim Mundorf of LonesomeLands.com. Jim is an author and artist, as well as a fifth-generation farmer, and he recently wrote an important article outlining what President Biden's proposed tax plan entails and its severe implications on the family farm. Welcome, Jim, and thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, can you give us a bit of background about yourself and what Lonesome Lands is? Yep. Um, so I'm in Southwest Iowa, I guess, my family farms. I grew up on a farm and my dad fed cattle and um, we farm corn, soybeans and have a cow calf herd. Um, what I do, I guess my main source of income is the Drover House. The DroverHouse.com is where I sell my artwork, um, which is mainly things I make out of Longhorns. Uh, I, I go around and pick up Texas Longhorns, build mounts and sculptures, and I've done furniture and different stuff like that. So cool. And so then I started Lonesome Lands. I actually went to school for um, for the media. I was a journalism minor for a little while, and then I realized I didn't want to do that at all. I had an interest in it, but as far as like a career and having to work your way up and those kind of things, I decided I didn't want to do it, but I went ahead and graduated with a communication degree. And then um, now that, I mean, that was, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago or so, 16 more. Um, but now that things have kind of made it easier for somebody like me just to start their own thing, um, I did that with Lonesome Lands. I started a couple of years ago. And, and the idea was just kind of to give my perspective more of like an agriculture type perspective on the news and different news. And that's where it started. And then it kind of, you know, as I got to researching more things and seeing some of the crazy things that are going on, um, it's kind of just went from there. So, yeah, that's good. So in your article, you quote Farm Progress magazine, who said Biden has two features in his estate tax plan. Um, one is unfortunate, but the other has disa is disastrous for farmers. So you can you tell us about what this proposed tax plan is? Right. And so. I guess the unfortunate, what they were talking about is the unfortunate part of the tax plan is eliminating the stepped up basis. And what that does is um, a stepped up basis takes the property your parents own um, and steps the value up to what it is worth when they die. Um, so if you're inheriting something, it's showing that you're inheriting land that is at its current value. Um, without that, it would show you're inheriting land. So by eliminating stepped up basis, you're showing um, that you're inheriting land at what your parents bought it at. And then that would also show what it's currently valued at. And that difference, it would be shown from what I've read as an income tax. And where that affects agriculture a lot is because in the last 25 to 30 years, the land prices have, you know, went crazy pretty much. And so in my article, I described, you know, kind of gave a roundabout idea of what land prices have done around here, which it went from around $900 an acre in the early 90s to, you know, anywhere between seven and $10,000 an acre now. So that's a big so, chunk of money. <laughs> right. And so these tax bills or proposals or whatever, and I doubt they really considered farmers or anyone else, they just want you know, they just want to, it seems like with this, they just want to take in as much money as possible. Right. Um, yeah. And so where it affects farmers, you know, they consider people who have equity of millions of dollars wealthy. Well, farmers, you know, do have that equity, but they're not making millions of dollars. So, right. Yeah. Can you give us like an example of the way it happens now against uh, how the proposed tax bill would be um, some numbers. I know you laid out a pretty good example in the article it was right. Um, and, and how it happens now. So I researched what this proposal was. So I'm, I'm yeah. more almost informed on that, like as compared to how it happens now, but how I understand it is, you know, you get your stepped up basis. So your land value is at, um, what it is when you inherit it. So if your parents die, you get it at that value and it shows your, you now have that land at that value, but it doesn't show you're gaining anything mm -hmm. um, as far as an income. 
without that, it's going to show you you're gaining an income from what your parents paid for it to what the what it's valued at now. And that works. And a lot of examples I saw were like people inheriting stocks or bond, you know, things, whatever your parents, like if your parents bought Apple stock in the 90s or 80s and you inherit it, you're going to end up paying a tax on what they paid for it compared to what it's what it is now. I think the example I read was Tesla, which I mean, that could just be a couple of years ago and you'd still have to pay a ton. But the difference in that and Biden's plan is your by removing the stepped up basis, even if you sell it or if you keep it, I'll try to find that there's a quote here. I, I kind of base this all off this article I found in Forbes where um, Robert Wood, who's a tax attorney, and he brought up the example of a small business that started from scratch and now is worth $20,000. And then he said that the person who inherits it would have to pay a 40% tax on or 39.6% tax on the entire value because when your parents started the business, they started from scratch. And so I took that example and just transferred it into agriculture. Mm. And what he says is, and a lot of people have brought this up that um, I saw someone talking about it and they said, they said Farm Bureau had mentioned a tax exemption, but according to him, who's a tax attorney, says no amount of a state tax exemption would help you because this is a big income tax increase. And then the disastrous part would be um, Mr. Biden's proposal would tax an assets unrealized appreciation at transfer, Mm -hmm. which means whether you keep it, whether you keep it and don't sell it or whether you sell it, you're still taxed um, that percentage. And so And since it would, you know, according to him, it would be called an income tax, you would be charged the top income tax rate, which would be 39.6%. Right. So we're talking millions of dollars potentially. Right. My example was, Mm -hmm. I I kind of rounded everything out and made it as easy as I could, you know, just as one air, but there's so many factors that go into agriculture and, and, you know, how many siblings and, and where you're at. And I, I focus a lot of what I write is about the cattle industry because I have a lot of interest there, but I brought this to farming just because I feel like it's easier to understand with farming and yeah. with cattle. There's so many, there's so many more different factors as far as land ownership and, and how, how your operations working. So I just felt like it was easier to, to, to talk about with farming, but it would affect all of agriculture. And so my example was if you bought a thousand acres in, or if your parents bought or inherited a thousand acres in, you know, the early nineties for $900 an acre and they sold in when they died, that property is worth $8,000 an acre. And they, and, and what they bought was a thousand acres, you know, when they died, that property is valued at 8 million. When they bought it, it would have been valued at 900,000. You have a difference of 7.1 million. Um, and you would be taxed at the time of death, according to um, this, you would be taxed to 39.6% on $7.1 million, whether you kept it or, or sold it. And so, and that would end up being 2.8 and some odd million dollar, you would have that tax bill at that time. Right. So, so how are farmers going to pay for that? Really, they were right. and- land, right? Exactly. And, and, you know, I've had some comments, well, you should be able to get a, a loan if, you know, if you own multi, still own, you know, millions of dollars worth of land, you should be able to get a loan for yeah, 40% of it. Well, yeah, that's the case. I, I suppose maybe you could, but my, my point is you would end up selling. Um, maybe you wouldn't sell right away, but if you're a lot of people that are inheriting land are in their fifties or sixties because their mm-hmm. parents are 75, 80, I think, that's your typical lifespan. And so, you know, you're 55 or 60 and you have to take out a loan for $2.8 million and you're farming, you're not going to have it paid off probably before you die. And so then your heirs, when you die, they have to pay a tax on how much that land appreciated. And I mean, if you live another 15, 20 years, you have, who knows where it'll be. And so they'll have to pay that stepped up basis that's or that basis a tax on the basis um 
and 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 then also you know if there's multiple siblings they have to buy you know so if you have three kids and two of them want to sell and you you've got one heir that's looking at has to buy out two kids plus take over dad's payments plus pay off the tax that you're going to owe you know i mean it's just it's absolutely un, unsustainable yeah that's it wow well i think so much is going to change in the next few months it's everyone needs to be definitely aware of what's going on and get prepared for that. And do you think there's anything that can be done? What do you think, you know, farmers should be doing right now? Yeah. I mean, and the main thing is just drawing attention to it. I would say, you know, draw as much attention to it as you can. Of course, like elected officials need to be, their attention needs to be drawn, I would say. Um, and so that was my, my goal and, and really, it is a, just a proposal people brought in. Well, that's just a proposal, but it's like mm -hmm. um, a lot of, and I've seen it in my lifetime for sure. You know, if you look at Obamacare when it passed, the, the famous quote was, we don't know what's in it. We have to pass it to find out what's in it. And, and that's where even just a couple of months ago with the, with the uh, you know, the COVID relief that passed, you know, these people got these 5,000, the senators got 5,000 pages of, of this bill and they were supposed to pass it the next day. And, and it seems like that's how things are going. If you really want something passed that you don't want the public aware of, you push it and you say it's got it or you wait till the last second and then you say, well, the government's gonna shut down if we don't do it. And so nobody knows what's in it. And so right. people don't start looking at what's in it and realize the ramifications. You know, it's a lot easier to stop it before it gets passed and, um, then you know trying to pull it back after it's through because once it's through and the government starts bringing in all this money they probably aren't going to want to give it back yeah for sure wow so so what also kind of an aside what do you think of the bill gates and jeff bezos farmland grab going on yeah that's it's hard to figure i mean i haven't really studied it a ton but it's it's odd to me it, it i mean and if you but if you do look at you know their business guys and if you look at the land prices what's happened in the past 20 years there's not been a whole lot of investments as good as buying land so mm -hmm. um i mean it is scary especially considering i mean there's been a lot of talk of ted turner over the years he's you know he's kind of a globalist kind of guy and he's really involved with the united nations and what is going to happen to that land is he going to donate it to you know, could this, could this be donated to who knows what when they die? So um, it's definitely, it's, it's odd to me that, that he's doing that. And, and it's kind of been secretive and it's all of a sudden, you know, he wasn't on this list of landowners gates I'm talking about yeah. um, until really recently. And, um, and with his kind of views, he's a big investor in, in fake meat, which I've done a lot of. I've written a lot on, um, mm -hmm. and which is kind of an anti-agriculture <laughs> industry. And so it's, it's definitely concerning. And Bezos, I think he's all, he's just started doing this recently and, and he's up to, I think the number 25 biggest land on, farm land owner. Um, so it, it's, I don't know. I don't know how those guys' brains work when they have that much money and how they can even <laughs> rationalize yeah. stuff. So. All I know is they don't do anything stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so there's definitely um, a plan well, here. <laughs> well. <laughs> it always seems to pay off. I don't know. If it's right. Yeah. That's that's a better way to say it. Yeah. yeah. Once you have that kind of money, it's easy to it's easy to make things work out for you. I think. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So I guess we just keep our eyes open and see where it goes and bring definitely some awareness to what's what this bill is and hopefully hopefully it gets rejected in this form or right somehow farm even, families yeah i mean and this is the really the preliminary like he this is what his proposal was while he was campaigning yeah. um, people have just started going through it now and so it's not even really a bill or anything else and you know, it, it seems, I think people might look at this and be like, well, there's no way that's going to pass. Well, I mean, this is his proposal. This is what he campaigned on. So, I mean, it'd be a good idea to, to keep an eye. On it yeah. We live in COVID times. Now we, we know anything's possible. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the last year, 
How yeah. many things have you said? There's no way that's going to happen. And then it happens. So. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But anyway, thank you so much um, for joining me. There are definitely some big issues rising up lately. And, uh, and I really appreciate your analysis and thanks to everybody who's watching or listening. If you want more information, um, all the show all in the show notes are all the links and you can, um, uh, visit, uh, lonesomelands.com as well. That'll, the links will be there. So thanks so much. Yep. Thank you.